Hi. Welcome to our channel Everyday Movie Recap. For today, we will recap the sci-fi thriller movie called The Darkest Hour from the year 2011. It revolves around a group of people fighting to survive through an alien invasion on Earth. Have you seen this movie yet? If not, sit back, relax, and hold on to your seats. In the beginning of the movie, we are introduced to two American software developers named Ben and Sean. They are on their way to Russia and are traveling by plane. A few minutes later, the plane momentarily loses control and blacks out, but it goes online again and they have a safe landing, their purpose in being here is to look for local investors for their software. Which locates pubs and events nearby, Sen had to use a marker to hide a hole in his old worn out suit, when they check to see if anyone is using their app here on their way to the company, they find two American females having a good time. They eventually reach a boardroom, where they find their associate Skyler, who has copied their business idea and is now marketing a replica to the Russians, has already started the investment meeting, Skylar orders security to take them away from the building, devastated, Sean and Ben head to a club to drink and forget their failure, in the club, they see many beautiful women, and Sean finds a good one, but we later find that she is already dating Skylar of all people. They also locate the females they noticed on the app, approach them, and discover that their names are Anne and Natalie. The two of them recognize the developers from their articles, just as the four of them are enjoying themselves, the electricity stops working and the phone signals get disconnected, outside, a weird yellow aurora forms, and everyone stares in awe as it breaks into many pieces and falls towards the city, one of the yellow lights even falls close to Sean's group. It is just a ball of glowing light. Cautiously, a policeman approaches it and stabs it with his baton. Just then, a sizzle of light from the object catches him and he immediately disintegrates. Another police tries shooting, but the bullet also gets consumed, additional lights soon emerge in the vicinity, killing everyone in their path, the light instantly destroys every window as Sean's group dashes back into the club and hurriedly shuts the doors, we then see the perspective of this creature who sees human heat with the color orange. These are the alien invaders who are mercilessly killing everyone in sight as it attacks, humans are drawn into its center where they are disintegrated by the energy lines it shoots at them. By fusing bar supplies into a homemade Molotov bomb, someone is able to repel the alien temporarily, then, Sean's group discovers a way out of the club through a hole in the wall, and they hide with the injured bartender in a supply room, in the meantime, those outside continue to be slain mercilessly, one by one, when their door is suddenly knocked on frantically. Natalie answers it despite the other person's worries and discovers Skylar hiding with them, the party manages to stay alive. Because of the food in the supply room, which makes it sufficiently safe for them to hide, the group covers the bartender's body with plastic and duct tape to prevent him from rotting and to perhaps mask the stench after the unfortunate bartender passes away from his wound. Every day, the stress increases as well, with arguments breaking out every two hours, the group has been hiding for five days, and they are almost out of food, they decide to venture outside and look for the embassy because there hasn't been any noise for the past 27 hours, on their way out, they find the bar utterly damaged and empty. Worse, the map of Moscow doesn't have any significant destinations indicated on it, instead, they gather whatever supplies they can find. After that, they discover the streets to be deserted, broken down, and full of abandoned cars, unaware of their destination, the party strolls down the street when all of a sudden they hear a commotion, they attempt to ask for assistance from a Russian woman who is caulking her apartment window, but she does not speak English and only speaks Russian when she warns them about the danger outside. The group eventually locates the bridge that would take them to the embassy, but a cruiser has destroyed it. When they arrive at Red Square and see an abandoned police car, they are still wandering the city, considering various options for crossing the river, Ben and Sean stealthily make their way to the car. Busting open the trunk to discover a flare pistol and a better map, just then, a dog starts barking at something. It instantly vanishes after getting consumed by the light. Fearing for their lives, Ben and Sean order the others to flee inside the shopping center and hastily cover beneath the squad car, as it gets closer, the car's lights and siren go on, but the creature, which can see inside the vehicle but not the guys underneath goes away, the two then dash into the mall to meet up with the others, they discover, to their dismay, that an airplane has crashed squarely into the structure. Sean and Ben believe they must go on in order to survive, but Skylar believes they should wait here until aid arrives. After talking about what transpired, they come to the conclusion that the creatures need to be protected by an electrical field that triggers electrical gadgets, in order to create warning necklaces that will illuminate if the monster approaches, they search for light bulbs, the party then proceeds in search of more cozy running attire, 
Sean can't resist watching Natalie get undressed when he notices that the bulbs are starting to go out. To his surprise, the creature walks right by him as he freezes in the display window, Natalie, in the meantime, hides amid the clothing racks as the creature breaks into the store, just as it is ready to grab hold of her, Sean abruptly pulls her away and commands her to freeze, Natalie's hair fries as the thing passes very close to them once more without spotting them, glass functions as an electrical insulator, and Sean realizes that this prevents the creature from sensing them, the party then exits the mall and heads to the US Embassy, only to discover that it has also been demolished. Along the way, they discover numerous bullet shells, and Skylar finds a loaded automatic rifle and starts shooting like crazy. They search the building and find that many cities have already fallen to the alien invasion. And no one has yet found any way to fight back, outdoors, they see the lights descending on earth and digging underground making more buildings collapse. They also find out that Skylar is gone and worries about him. Gunshots soon are heard as Skylar is shooting at the ball of light. He shouts at the group to go ahead and leave him while he distracts the enemy. He fights but is soon reduced to dust, when the group gets back together, Sean spots a powered room in a nearby apartment complex, and they assume this is what caused Skylar to move on his own, the trio cautiously makes its way through the city in the dark. Dodging the aliens and making sure they are not spotted, before they even arrive at the main gate, a woman holding a rifle the name of Vika blocks their way. The group tells her to stop, and thankfully, she speaks English, so the group explains why they are there. Vika says that she is also there for the same reason. They are surprised to see that the whole room is covered with a metal cage. The owner of the apartment Sergei, is behind it and explains that he uses the iron cage to block electric fields, thereby making them invisible to the alien creatures, from within the cage, the group switches on the radio, and Vika interprets, as per the message, if any survivors make it to the nuclear submarine before morning, it will retrieve them from the Moscow River. Sergei clarifies that the submarines are ideal Faraday cages and adds that innumerable submarines are performing the same action all over the globe, though they'll need supplies first, the party decides to head out together in search of the submarine, while leaving the flat with Natalie and Anne to gather from other units. Vika forgets to properly close the door behind them, Sergei believes he can use the microwave pistol he invented to break through the monster's electrical shield and waveform, so he shows it to Sean and Ben. As the girls search the structure for supplies, the aliens see them and charge at them, the females flee as soon as the outside lights reveal their movements, though and believe she can make it, she rushes to Sergei's residence with Natalie trailing behind. Sergei and Vika flee to a hiding place, they enter the apartment and find themselves unable to shut the hatch, so they take cover behind a glass table, Sergei shoots the monster with the microwave gun as it swiftly enters the building. The creature appears to be affected by the waves, as it freezes for a brief period of time and exposes its body to them, however, it only lasts for a short while, and Sergei is unable to recharge in time, so the monster kills Sergei and turns invisible once more, Natalie dashes to ignite some diesel fuel to conceal Sean and Ben's escape while they climb out through a fire escape, next, she dashes to catch up with the boys, but Anne is too terrified to move quickly enough, when she gets up to leave the table, the monster notices her and begins to kill her as well, Sean pushes Natalie to move forward, after meeting up with Vika outside the building after descending the emergency stairs, the group flees as they witness the flames within the apartment spreading, a few minutes later, they discover that a group of metal-clad Russian police officers blocking their path are brandishing homemade shields and firearms, when the street lights begin to glow, they order the group to hide, and they begin shooting at the creature, through the use of a flamethrower, rocket-propelled grenade, and gunfire, they inflict damage and drive the monster away, the police clarify that while they can damage the aliens, they cannot destroy them. They also add that the aliens are most vulnerable when they use their killing rays, Sean chooses to preserve a fragment of a hard, black substance that was knocked from the creature's shield after noticing it on the ground, following that, the police lead the gang to their hiding place, where both parties divulge any information that they have, because the leader notes that the river is too far away and the area is infected. The cops are unsure if they can trust the radio transmission. Initially, the police decline to accompany the group when they want to depart, citing their desire to safeguard their residence, when Natalie says she wants to go home. The police agree to at least drive them to the river, for added precaution, both groups head out together via the underground tunnels, they scatter little light bulbs on the floor to look for monsters because it's quite dark down there, as soon as they begin to glow, the group runs to the subway platform for cover while light lines shoot into the tunnel in an attempt to attack as the party jumps onto the train tracks one by one for safety, Vika becomes stuck behind a pillar, Ben returns to save her, 
hurling her into the track in the nick of time. He can't go quickly enough though, and the light quickly catches up with him, dragging him across the ground before murdering him. After Natalie forces Sean to walk because he is shocked the party escapes the tunnel without suffering any more casualties. They soon arrive at the river, where they steal a boat and use it to navigate until they locate the submarine, as they wait, they mourn their departed companions and, just in case, Sean bids Natalie farewell since he was never able to say goodbye to Ben, some debris eventually forces the boat into the rocks, therefore, they need to determine how to free it, abruptly, they witness multiple enormous light beams transporting metals and riches into the sky. And the police determine that these have to be extraterrestrials searching for minerals on Earth because they carry out electricity. It is then that they finally notice the submarine coming, while simultaneously a structure, adjacent to the stream falls, the boat gets overturned by the debris that crashes upon it, causing everyone to tumble into the water. Sean, Vika, and the officer succeeded in swimming to the submarine. The captain extends his greetings and declares that they must depart right away, however, Sean observes Natalie gone, just before they head off, the submarine's technicians examine the microwave cannon and construct a further one with improved batteries. Sean then takes off with the police and as many weapons as he can carry, leaving Vika in the protection of the underwater vehicle. The group is moving through the streets, they use phones as warning devices and toss them on the ground. When they eventually arrive at a trolleybus depot, a phone rings to signal the arrival of the enemy, using the gun, Sean activates it and shoots at the alien. It creates an opening to their shield and a police is able to shoot at its unprotected face. For the first time, humanity is able to kill the alien. They all rejoice and Natalie hears them. She uses the bus wipers then turns on to show where she is hiding, Sean discovers Natalie on the bus, and they share a hug, the bus doors suddenly close due to an electrical surge from an alien, which then forces it to move, Sean tries to fire the alien when some sparks show that it is inside, however, the bus's motion, makes him fail to hit. Natalie is dragged by the alien as it manages to clutch her leg. But it's exposed now so Sean uses the microwave gun to immobilize it. The bus is then maneuvered by Natalie to prevent crashing while Sean keeps firing at the alien, it stops the monster from moving but does not kill it. Sean doesn't actually have any weapons, but he does recall the black substance, so he tosses it, causing it to burst apart. When the electricity runs out, the bus finally stops, the group then makes a mad dash for the submarine, however, the police choose to remain to safeguard their home and ask Sean to share the method to defeat the aliens. Before long, the submarine departs, and a technician fixes Natalie's phone, enabling her to receive an SMS from her mother. It states that she is secure and is holed up in Penn Station with survivors. The movie ends as the group listens to any more survivors that need help. They plan to defend their home planet from the alien invasion. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy content like this, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video.